I'm seeing a lot of videos in which the presenter mistakes compound paths and compound shapes in Adobe Illustrator, but the difference can be quite important. So hello to the Vector Garden YouTube channel. In this small series, we're going to take a look at how to create compound paths and compound shapes. What's the difference, why it matters, what you can use them for, and how to solve some issues that might appear when you use them. In the first two videos we looked at how to build compound paths and compound shapes and we also talked about how to use them and what they can be used for. But now we're going to talk about how they build the visible shape. So let's draw this situation and I'm going to draw another one and let's make that in yellow. So we have this and I'm going to make a duplicate. So when we make a compound path using the command here or the shortcut, which is the eight. So I'm using command eight on Windows, you use control eight, then you get a hole. But when you move this outside, so I'm going to take the group selection tool and be very careful where to grab it and then move it, then you see I'm getting this overlap. So compound paths always have a kind of alternating fill and hole. So you cannot define this to punch in all kinds of situations. On the other hand, when you make this with the compound shape by holding down Alt and clicking here, then you actually define this as punching. And if you then later grab it and move it outside, then you see it will still punch. And if there is no shape, then also it, it won't create any other kind of mode. Let's undo this and let's use uh, this one instead and move it outside. And then you see it behaves like the compound path. Now, in order to switch this, what you can do is hold down, I have this one selected, hold down Alt and then click on the other modes and you see you get different kinds of results depending on where you click. With the compound paths, there's another thing. If I select uh, this path here and then go to object, path and reverse the direction, then you see it doesn't even punch a hole, not even where they overlap. Let's take a look at that. I'm going to select it. Let's go to Window Attributes and there we have Overprint Fill, so what gives? You go into the menu and Show All and then we have these four options that drive the compound path. So this is the fill rule and currently it's set to non-zero winding, which is the more complex method. If we change this to even odd, then it works simple. So even odd means whenever there's an even number of shapes stacked onto each other, we will get a hole. With an uneven number of objects, we will just get this filled area. And with uh, this one, the default one, it depends on the path direction. So if I select this and click one of those buttons or use the command as I've done before, then you see I'm getting a hole or not. But this method is the one that you might need to use in some cases because some other functionality that you use later on will not work with the even odd fill rule. This can be kind of unpredictable if you don't know how these two work or that they even exist. That leads us to another situation. You might have seen these meta balls and the meta balls work like that. So when you double click it and then move one of them around, then you see they flow into each other with which is the meta ball behavior which is quite nice. And then I'm doing it with this one. And again, I have to be careful what I select, but you see I'm moving this one and there it overlaps. So again, this one is the compound path, which is how most tutorials teach that. 
which is then unpredictable and not safe. And the other one is the compound shape, which of course works because the circles have unite applied and that is something they just have. And then there's another thing where the difference is interesting and that is about clipping masks. So I'm once again creating uh, this situation where we have to combine multiple objects for a clipping mask. And for one of them, I'm creating the compound path. So let's go here and make. And for the other one, I'm going to use the compound shape by holding down Alt and clicking here. So both of these work as a clipping mask. And let's have the image here. I'm going to zoom out and here we have the image. This is it. I'm going to take this image into here and make a duplicate. And if we just select this and press Command 7 or in Windows Control 7 to make a mask, then you see both of them work. Let's undo that. And there's another method to create clipping masks, which is this one here, this button draw inside. I've made a video about that as well. So how to create clipping masks. If you want to watch that and see the difference between the methods, then I'm going to link it in the comments. We can select uh, this one, which is the compound path. And you see the button is active. We can click it and we have the draw inside mode and can just take any kind of tool. So let's take the pencil tool and make a color here. And you see, I can draw something and we get the mask like this. So I'm going to double click it to get out of there, select this one, and you see the button is not active. So the compound shape works as a clipping mask, but doesn't work with draw inside, which is kind of important as well.